So firstly, I'd like to invite everyone to not try to intellectually understand any of what we're saying. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, when we're talking for 10 minutes each, and you, if, you, if you are trying to grok everything, really get it, compartmentalize it, compare it to what you know already, that's too much work. There's no need. We, we come here to relax, let everything be as it is, and find that we can empower ourselves, no matter what the datum, by allowing things to be as they are. So it's a very easeful and effortless way of living, but powerful as well. It's not like we eschew any of the problems or anything like that. So f again, coming back to the recognition of open intelligence and relying on short moments of open intelligence, however that is for you. For me, what works great is to just, in a short moment, relax body and mind not try to get anything. Just like I'm going to the beach and I'm laying down on the lawn chair and that's that. Or like you're just sitting in these chairs right now, relaxing in this amazing, beautiful space that we've, we've all created together. There's an ease, a natural presence here. An immediate benefit. So short moments of this immediate benefit in the recognition of open intelligence. And then all the data starts streaming back in again. You know, thinking about what we did this morning. Did we say the right thing to our partner or our loved one or the shopkeeper? And then you're replaying that over and over again in your mind, thinking, how could I have done it differently? Or thinking about all the other past events and really drudging it all up and feeling all of the intense pain and what everyone did wrong and the blame and guilt and shame. And, you know, just thinking about all this, then we can just, you just start to feel the tension coming back in. So right then and there, when you naturally remember to do so, just take this short moment of open intelligence. Emphasize your, what is looking through your eyes, rather than emphasizing all of the descriptions. Now that is why short moments are so important, because if we try to prolong that or hold on to it, it doesn't really work. You know, it's not like you're sitting there thinking, okay, now I'm ruminizing about the past and it feels horrible. I must stay in this relaxed, beneficial state and hold it. So that, that's, again, too much effort. So short moments, repeated many times, open intelligence becomes continuous. Now this is how we learn anything. Like we learn to ride a bicycle, tire shoes, learn to write and read. It's short moment by short moment. So the same with getting accustomed with the nature of our mind, open intelligence. I used to think my mind was the contents, all of my thoughts, all of my bodily sensations, stuff that was within or without. But by allowing data to be as it is, the short moments of relaxation, I started to see my mind is it's wide open like the sky. And then all of the data, they're just fleeting. The only reason I feel tension is when I start indulging in them or trying to push them away or I try to replace them with something. So the short moments of allowing all, all the data to be as it is. So, yeah, especially with things that have happened in the past, I just know it's so easy to replay these things and try to it's really impossible to try to fix the past. You know, we operate from the here and now. So what I started to see was, well, if I had, if I had made a mistake, then I have the choice now to, to learn from that mistake and to move forward and seeing how I can empower myself and the other person. So just these natural insights start to become more and, more and more obvious due to allowing the data to be as it is. If I continued to replay everything, I just would not see a solution. So that's really important to see, okay, well, what can we do now to ensure that everyone is looked after and cared for and treated with respect and dignity and, you know, people are no longer marginalized? What can we do now as a species? And what can I do as my part? So the talk I gave the other day just talking about what about us is unified, 
the unity of all humanity is our open intelligence. So we can empower everyone in their own open intelligence that is inherently ethical and inherently moral and just knows what to do that will be of most benefit. So a lot of this all actually comes about though by being with a community of people that are interested in this. You know, if you wanted to learn how to play the violin, you'd want to spend time with violinists. You wouldn't hang out with tuba players and bass players if you're trying to learn how to play the violin. There's no comparison. And the same with training up. We all experience all kinds of data every single day. Whether we feel <coughs> hatred towards ourselves or someone else, or whether we have a lot of pleasant easygoing data and we can't figure out why everyone needs to come to the Balance View Center because, you know, aren't people happy? And <laughs> There's the whole array, array. It's like we all experience everything. So we come here and we, it's a normalization field. We get to see that everybody does have an array of experience and some people have a bit more of this and some people have a bit more of that. And how do we actually come together and be together on a daily basis and still flourish and feel like there's a connection? And again, it couldn't be based on the data. You know, if somebody else has a different belief system about food than I do, before the balance view training, I couldn't hang out with people who had a different idea about food and the environment and music because there was no, there was no way to connect. You know, it was just a, a battle uh, trying to prove that my theory was better than theirs. You come here and it's like, you can get along with, you know, the carnivores can get along with the vegans, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we stop focusing in on all the petty differences. That, that just naturally evaporates. We see that that's not important. What is important is this real care and, yeah, like I said, respect and dignity for everyone and everything. And then we come up with solutions then from that vantage. So relaxes versus resigning. You know, resigning, that, that almost has a sense of, well, Everything is, it, uh, is as it is, therefore I can either do what I want or it doesn't matter. So there's the extreme of like nihilism versus extremism. And, and that's, you know, that's not really what we're doing here. Uh, resigning, complete relaxation is letting data be as they are with neither accepting them nor rejecting them. And again, to, don't try to intellectualize that. Just the short moments of allowing the, that whole concept to be as it is. I always love the breeze in the air analogy. Are you trying to accept the breeze now, or are you trying to reject it? Or are you just allowing it to be as it is? Are you trying to accept your negative thoughts and reject positive thoughts, or can you just allow them to be as they are? And that's what I had to see about my own, especially the thoughts like hatefulness, being, feeling hatred towards people and hatred towards myself. I realized it was there and that, you know, there's nothing wrong with us if these data streams appear within us. It's just the natural flow of data. It's just a description we've pinned on it. And the more we let it be as it is. And also, it was mentioned in the Four Mainstays, we come to the trainings and hear that data streams are, they naturally self-release. They arise and they self-release within open intelligence. The trainings support this recognition that data are inseparable from open intelligence and they have no, they don't really define who we are. And you can't really find an outer and inner either. You know, where's the inside and the outside? If you think about something right now, where is it located? It might feel like it's in our brains, but 
You can project it anywhere. You can think about your home and the other countries that you live in right now, and you can picture yourself sitting at your kitchen table, and there you are. But then you're right here. So that just shows the insubstantiality of data. That they don't need to be taken so seriously when they are allowed to be as they are again. This powerful discernment, this clarity and insight of how to treat ourselves and others becomes so apparent, it's so obvious that it can't be missed. And again, that's why I love this training, because it's not, I didn't have to come change anything about myself. These things that I labeled as bad habits, they naturally self-released. Just by hanging out within the community setting, participating in trainings, listening to many of the talks on the website, and relying on my trainer for support, you know, just having a person who has gone before me who can share their direct experience, who knows the pitfalls along the way, who knows maybe some special instructions that apply just for us. Yeah, because otherwise, just going, you know, if you, this was your first meeting, and you can go out and test short moments, but it's good to have this whole array of support. You know, take one of these little booklets when you go and go to the beach, relax deeply, and just read some through some of the text. It becomes elicited in our direct experience and we don't need to think about it. It's not like you're learning physics where you really have to memorize the equations and if you don't get the equation quite, or quite right, you won't end up with the proper answer. You know, it's everything confirming complete relaxation and empowerment. And depression, so yeah, I mean, it's, sometimes we face situations that are kind of a bummer. You know, I wouldn't want to have arrived here in Goa and then wouldn't be able to go to the beach or, or whatever, but, you know, we never know what's going to happen next, so this training allows us to be available and ready for anything that can come through the practice of short moments of not describing the depression. For me, I had a lot of depression before I came to the training, and by allowing it to be as it is, not labeling every little dark thing, thought, emotion, sensation as depression, it, it dissolved like a mist in the air. And if I wake up in the morning and really don't want to get out of bed, I think this morning I felt like sleeping for at least three more hours, but I couldn't do that, so what to do? And you're here now, and you have a nice smile on your face, and the depression has... And it may come back again, and you practice short moments again, or write to your trainer, or you know, pick up one of the books and read a few lines, and, and then you'll see how to take care of yourself throughout the day. And, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's so nice to live without a war going on inside our head. The war within. I mean, does anybody want to be at war with themselves? And I really realized how much I was at war with everything about myself. Second guessing myself, whether it was about my speech or the way I acted or what I said, and then looking at my strengths, gifts, and talents and feeling I wasn't as powerful as that person over there. and. It was just a constant comparison, a critical analysis, and it was really exhausting. And the more I participated, the more I saw it, and the more I could practice short moments of letting it be as it is. And then I started to see, wow, I actually do have gifts, strengths, and talents that are unique to me and that I can contribute, and that so does everyone else. And I gave up my right to be a victim of the data about myself. That was so important. Rather than choosing to continue to oppress myself and all the things I learned about myself and all the descriptions I imposed on myself, I chose to completely empower myself short moment by short moment. And it, it feels like a never-ending empowerment. It's not like we reach a point where, okay, now you're totally empowered and that's it. It's just a never-ending empowerment. 
So yeah, thank you everyone. It's, you know, we have a global community, people all over the world empowering themselves through this simple practice, through the Four Mainstays lifestyle. And then we demonstrate it, you know, we really powerfully demonstrate this. <laughs>